Hi, everyone. This is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. And today I am joined again by my friend Kat from The Creative Introvert. Kat is my social media manager. She helps me aggregate questions from all of you and um, work them into really fun Q&A episodes. She is also an astrologer and um, is going to be teaching a class on uh, developing your relationship with your daimon through your birth chart in my upcoming spring speaker series. Um, Kat's a fantastic person, and I'm really glad to have her help doing this Q&A series. So thanks again for being here, Kat. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about electional astrology um, or inceptional astrology, I think is the other name for it. So mm -hmm. can you give us a little overview of what that is? What kind of astrology is that? Sure. Well, it's one of the branches of astrology. People argue about how many branches of astrology there are. You've got natal astrology. You've got mundane astrology. So natal is going to look at birth charts. Mundane is going to look at like world events or events happening in the collective. Everything that I do on my channel is in a sense mundane astrology because you're looking at the planets as reflective of current events or things that more or less everyone's going through on some level. That's a broad definition of mundane astrology. Um, then you have electional astrology is another branch, horary. Sometimes people will say medical as well. But so um, electional astrology is going to be about looking at the, the appropriate time to start or begin something in order to get a certain result or the most likely thing that will happen based on the moment that something started. Um, and uh, sometimes when it's like looking for the best time to do something like to say your wedding vows, or there's a lot of different uses for electional, but that's kind of a broad definition. Okay. And what are some of the things that people look at? I mean, you don't have to give us a proper in-depth um, explanation, but um anything in particular in the chart that you would be looking at to, yeah. to say like this is a good time basically right well you're gonna have uh, there's a whole you know a couple thousand years worth of of history of electional techniques and and you know textbooks and things like that so the techniques are many just like they are for horary or natal um but one like let's just say for example that you're planning a wedding and you want to plan the best day for the wedding a practitioner might look at the birth charts of the two people getting married uh, look at the transits affecting both charts and then try to elect a day on which maybe venus is well situated the lights are harmonious there's nothing you know malefic afflicting the moon or venus i mean you you there's i'm just giving some general impressions but they're going to be people who essentially go, okay, this looks like a good day for both people getting married. The day itself looks good. My wife and I had one of my um, teachers, his name is Chris, and he did our election for our wedding. And this is really remarkable. So he timed it out. And it, I mean, it was just beautiful the way that he, um, that he did it. And you know, the vows were timed out to a specific time and it had been raining like all morning and it was wet and gray and dark. It was like, it was in October. So, and it was in Maryland, right? Not far from this place called the Caboose Farms, not far from Camp David, uh, if I remember correctly. Anyway, um, so he had timed it all perfectly. It was like the, the day uh, couldn't have been grosser. It was just, and we were like, oh, man, you know, screw it. I want my money back. <laughs> exactly. He was our priest too, though. He was doing the oh. actual vows. So couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't be too upset with him. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. So then later in the day, right? It's probably about 3.30. I think our vows were like 4.30 or something like that. So it, we go to get our, we go to get our pictures taken and it's like, great. You know, it's like a gross day. Right as we're about to get our pictures taken, the sky just breaks open completely, like completely broke open with sunlight for like two hours, perfect for our photos and for the vows. And then as soon as the, what, the, the ceremony was over, it got dark and like fog set in. And like the whole place was just covered in fog and it was very mystical and I'll never, ever forget it. It was, it was so magical. And he had like really been like, th no, this window, it's like right between here and here. And I always remember, I mean, who knows, but I always think of that as like a little electional miracle. So, um, you know, 
I, I'm, I'm a believer in electional astrology big time, and there's lots of different techniques, but you're essentially looking for the right window of time for something to happen. And there's going to be a, what you, which houses do you want planets in at the time you start something, which planets are the ones that represent the kinds of things you're trying to do, what kinds of applications from the moon are happening. There's, you know, it's like, there's long, and I'm not a, I'm not an electional astrologer. I, I refer people to you know, like Lisa Scheim or Chris Brennan, they, they like doing, they have really good, you know, monthly elections that they do. And I'll, I'll point people in their direction or other people too. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real thing. And people have been using it for a long time. So why don't you use, do you like use it yourself or? This is a complicated answer. And I'm, I'm always like, I always want to try to be really respectful when I talk about this. Sometimes in the past I haven't been, and I've sort of regretted it. So I've learned to be more respectful about it, but Essentially, I feel like here's me coming up with little categories again. So I have like two categories that I would place electional into, and I would call it like uh, uh, sensible timing. I, I'm trying to remember what the word is. Is it is it uh, kairos? There's, oh yeah, there's, yeah, there's, the the right time. For the something. right time, right? It's it. There's a, a sense of like there's something I have to do that I'm going to do but I feel like I need to be thoughtful about the timing. Mm. And I have no problem with that kind of electional astrology. I do that kind of electional astrology myself, but not in any kind of formal way. Let me give you a simple example. I know I have a tough email that I have to send, or I know that, um, you know, I need to say no to someone about something, or I know that I need to, um, I need to find a time to, um, I don't know, talk to a family member or something like that. And as I feel the impulse to do so, I look at the astrology and the astrology shows me that the moon is about to oppose Mars. Okay. So right there I go, yeah, this is going to be a difficult conversation. If I wait till tomorrow, the moon will be moving through a trine with Venus. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that time because not because that will make the other person give me the result that I want, but it will make me less likely to, get triggered or, or get into my worst self. I'm really thinking about that because I don't know. I don't, I don't use electional astrology to manipulate outcomes. What I, what I use it for is to try to flow with a Tao. In fact, more than I use electional astrology, I use the I Ching. Um, if I have questions about, you know, what's the right approach to take to something as well as, is this the right time to do something? I usually approach the I Ching the I Ching gives me this reflective kind of reflective feedback about helping me understand the Tao of the moment, the way the energy is flowing in the moment and the most likely results or reactions of choices that I'm about to make given what the nature of the moment is. And that's how I think electional astrology can be sensitively used. It's a, uh, it's a way of just having a little bit of a GPS to help you navigate things. So I'm fine with that use of electional astrology in general. And I use it in, I would say, pretty small ways. Um, you know, at least a few times a week, I'll check on something, you know, or I'll just be like, huh, there's something in the air. Let me look and see what's going on and use that to intelligently navigate. Um, I think that's just smart astrology. The other kind of electional that I don't like and I don't use, which I do feel, um, broadly speaking, can... Uh, it, it's in some ways it's sort of inundated traditional astrology and I, and I'm not a fan of it personally. And, and, and so you have to just respect me if, and I'll respect you if we disagree, you know, but um, <clears throat> it is, I'm always, I'm, I'm casting an election to get a wealthy business. I'm casting an election chart to, I'm trying to find something to maximize my pleasure or my self-interest. <clears throat> and I think it's really subtle. The difference is, you know, one is we're using astrology in a way to um, intel again, sort of intelligently navigate our life, staying mindful. But in that approach, we are unattached to results. And fundamental to my faith practice is trying to, it's like it's karma yoga as described in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. I, I act without attachment to results. I'm not saying I'm always like that, but that's my practice. That's what I'm always aiming toward. And if the astrology can help me do that, then great. Um, and for maybe for certain really big moments, you know, like I'll, I'll look for an astrologically auspicious moment in which to, like I had to choose the birth time of my daughter, you know, cause we had to elect, uh, uh, my wife being induced. 
Um, those moments, I'm also not, as long as people aren't like, okay, I'm just like, I got to figure out how to get my kid rich or how to, but this other space of electional where it's like, okay, what's the best time to, you know, to buy cryptocurrency next month? What's the best time to do this or that? And it's all about serving some kind of selfish interest. I don't practice that. I'm not interested in that. And I do find my, my small criticism is that I do find that sometimes electional astrology in, in, within the traditional world is sort of overrun by that mentality. And I'm, I'm, I'm averse to it because that my, of what my faith path is, you could say. Yeah, I think it is tricky because it does seem like there's a fine line between, um, in both cases, you're probably going to take that action anyway. But I think the difference that I'm hearing you mark out is one sort of like the the light electional astrology is I'm trying to go with the flow of what's going to happen anyway, but maybe just make life as, you know, relatively easier on myself because I've got these tools and these are like, let's say these are God given tools that I'm going to, I don't know if you agree with that, but like, um, you know, try to give myself the best shot. The other is I'm going to, um, try to almost get something unnatural, something that I wouldn't have gotten anyway. And I'm, yeah, just going to get like too invested in, in the outcome of that thing. Um, does that make sense? Is that what you were trying to say? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just sort of like, you know, the difference between wanting to win something, get something, gain something, benefit from something um, versus it's kind, of, it's kind of like we're all on a river, you know, we're all on a river, we're all in boats on the river and there's currents. Um, so, so I guess to use an analogy, I don't know if this analogy is going to work, but say, let's say the person who uses electional or the I Ching or tarot or anything to just intelligently navigate, um, it's sort of like saying, you know, look, I don't always know what to do. And I don't, I, it's not just, I don't want to do the wrong thing because I'm afraid of punishment or I'm afraid of messing up or something. It's, I'm trying to be my best self here. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be the highest version of myself to live life with virtue, to live life intelligently, to find the appropriate time for things, to, to be sensitive and to know there's a season for all things and what it, what is the season right now? And, um, and in order to do that, we have to be unattached to results. We have to be asking the question, where is that higher guidance? Because I don't know it all. I'm not in control of everything. And I, I need a little navigational help. That attitude to me in approaching astrology in, in a humble way, even if you're saying like, uh, I could use a little help in knowing when the best time is to choose the birth of my child. I think if you approach it like that humbly and just trying to, um, you know, ch choose the best moment. If you have to choose a date and time as a parent, like I did, it's like, well, astrology was there to help me with that. But I wasn't sitting down, in other words, going like, okay, I got to make sure that everything's in the right place. So my kid will go to Harvard. So that this, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, and, and I think there's the, the difference really boils down to intention. Why are we using this? And, and so, yeah, that's, I guess that's a, my answer. Well, I'm just wondering if it's it's also like about the attitude, right? Because two different people could um, elect to start a business on a certain day, but one could be, and I want to get like like filthy rich, and the other could be like, I just want this to go as smoothly as possible. Would you say that that's fair? Yeah, because in the in the latter example, I just want this to be you know smooth. I I really think that if a person sits down with an electional astrologer and says, you know. I, I want to ritualize and sanctify this business, which means I want this business to be an offering of my dharma. Let's well, just broadly define dharma as pious sense of duty in the world. I'm doing this because it's something that I can do with my time, energy, resources that will take care of my family and put food on the table, that will pay my mortgage, that will um, do some good for others. You know, in other words, if, if we're using electional astrology to just say, <clears throat> help me find a good moment, I want to do this sensitively, I want to ritualize it, I want to make sure that the gods and that, you know, uh, Godhead, so to speak, knows that I, my heart's in the right place and that I, I want to make sure that this is sort of blessed in the same way that you start a marriage by taking vows, right? I, I think that electional can be a way of sanctifying and blessing the opening of an endeavor. And with that attitude, that humble attitude, like I, I want this to be 
um, you know, aligned with the cosmos in a favorable way, uh, you know, like I want to be working with the circle mm-hmm. of life, so to speak, then I, I really believe that that's the appropriate use of election. But when, again, when it's like, I'm using an election either because I'm really scared of something bad happening that I don't want, or I really want something desire and aversion, desire and fear. When those are the motor behind it, I find that it, it, it makes astrology into something superstitious and, um, it, it will entangle us further in, in karma. It's not to say it doesn't work either. Cause I, I, I'm, I believe that there's real power in this. I'm just saying it's how, how we use it. That's important. Yeah. I really like that. You brought that up that you can kind of um, show the thing that you're electing for respect, kind of making it sacred in, in, picking an election time I, I like yeah because i'm not at all against elections like if pe- you know people will ask me hey can you do this and i'll be like no i can't but i know someone who can and usually i'll, I'll point people to like you know one of my colleagues i wouldn't do that if i thought that it was just totally bogus but there is like i see constantly people using elections on on, on online forums and stuff like that as a, as a way basically of trying to ensure that they either get what they want or they avoid what they fear And I personally don't believe that that's any way to live, nor do I believe that was the original intended use of astrology. So I'm a little bit of a stickler about that, but I I feel sometimes I've made really flippant remarks about electional and mischaracterized it only because, you know, sometimes I've just felt overwhelmed by what I've seen on social media as a cheapening of the art. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to get into an argument with you about it, but that doesn't seem to have happened. (laughs) But, um, So is it a little bit like, because you're making me think a little bit about the, um, how horary can also be maybe misused, yeah. um, depending on our intention. Yeah. Heck any, any branch can be, you know, cause you can come from the same space using astrology from the same space, really any branch of astrology. It's like, well, let me use natal astrology to try and find out when my good transits are and get what I want or avoid what I don't want. And there's to some extent, our anxieties about outcomes are just very human and a part of life. And I'm not suggesting that you have to be totally pure to use astrology. Um, It's just that astrology should be purifying us of those kinds of fears and desires as we go, because, um, you know, as, as Firmicus Maternus says, as Vettius Fallon says, as Ptolemy said, this, this study of the stars should make us confident in our souls, which means that It's who we are and what we are, not what happens, not what we do and what reactions happen, good or bad, that really define our happiness. And astrology should be something that reinforces that by helping us study the the laws of the universe, the movement of the Tao and so forth. So any branch could be perverted like that. Electional hasn't more, even more than I guess I've had some big philosophical issue with it. It's just been like, I can't do everything. You know, I've got to, I'm like natal, horary, doing mundane work every day on YouTube, like so you can't do every, I can't do medical. I can't do, um, you know, electional at this point in time, just purely because I don't have time. But um, yeah, I, I, I guess, <clears throat> again, like most of the time when people are like, when people contact me and they're like, look, um, I want to know when the best time is to have a baby so that it has no health problems. Um my general response to that is going to be like, here, you know, go see an electional astrologer because that's not my thing. But philosophically, I'm going, what I would like to see that person adjust to is I want to find a sacred time for the birth um, that looks like it's auspicious and supportive of health and wellness. But I'm doing that unattached. And more than anything, I'm doing this just to signal my sense of respect for the cosmos and what's coming into my life right now. Yeah. And I think questions like that can come about because of a misunderstanding about electional and thinking that maybe it's more powerful than it is. Like I've been practicing it for a while and I know that there's no perfect chart. Um, And also there's, it's going to be interplaying with your own and, you know, there are other things that are going to be fated that um, no electional chart is going to get around. So I think just having that understanding is um, humbling. and Yeah. Yeah, totally. Good point. Uh, I think that's all we've got for electional. Okay, great. Well, that was a good good episode. If you guys have any questions you'd ever like to ask for this Q&A series, feel free to email info at nightlightastrology.com. Put YouTube Q&A in the subject line 
I'll get it over to Kat so that we can put it into a future episode. Um, meanwhile, you can find Kat at thecreativeintrovert.com. She's also got a new talk coming up in my spring speaker series on the Daimon, helping locate, find, work with the Daimon in your birth chart, um, which is fantastic. Um, that's going to be a really great talk. So excited for that. You can check uh, Kat's workout, like I said, on thecreativeintrovert.com. Thanks, Kat, for being here, and we will see you all again next time.